What gives life purpose and meaning? People create purpose in life with their relationships, dreams, religious devotions, helping others, careers, and many other pursuits. While these do produce a direction for our existence, they are only branches compared to the root of a purposeful life. Once the root is addressed, these other actions will flourish. We discover our greatest purpose when we pursue our values in the midst of opposing values. Each attack forces us to choose what we truly value and what we are willing to sacrifice. This constant suffering creates character and endurance, unless we give up. Oppression forges strong men and women to rise up and, sometimes, to a position that allows them to set their values and character as a standard. When this happens, however, we notice these times of peace do not last forever. What happens when there is no exterior opposition forcing people to cling to their values and fight for them? People have an innate desire to conquer an antagonist. But when there is no overt power challenging people's values and their quality of life, people create their own problems to give them purpose. Bosses, police, neighbors, friends, co-workers, governments, brands, sport teams, schools, religion, any form of authority, any uncertain people or things, etc. are targets to becoming enemies. It is not that these lack any issues, but people in less tyrannical times are subject to identifying themselves as a victim, forcing others to comply with their demands. They feel their quality of life is being robbed and so they create pandemonium to provide an opportunity to fight a false antagonist. This satisfies their adopted victimized identity. They end up destroying the good for the sake of purpose. This begs the question, why do we have such a desire to overcome an antagonist? And, since an antagonist is an opposer of our values, a relevant follower question is, what is the highest, greatest value we should all be striving for? My conclusion to the first question is that we desire to overcome an antagonist because we do not possess personal, internal peace. The greatest antagonist may not be the obvious, exterior opposition, but rather ourselves. Clinging to our values during times of oppression produces character and endurance, and forces people to face their inner demons and flaws. Living in oppression inadvertently addresses the greater issue, us, however, that does not completely relieve us from our internal oppressor. When we live in peace and prosperity, there are fewer opportunities to pursue an outward struggle. Outward struggles are easier to address compared to addressing the destructive potential in ourselves. When people choose to identify with their demons and flaws, they are ignoring the greatest oppressor of their own values. They force other people to comply with their dysfunction, thus becoming an oppressor and destroying the good virtuous people worked hard to build. If you have complete internal peace, you would have no need to find oppression or overcome internal demons. Until then, you are your greatest moral oppressor. When times are not difficult, always keep your heart in check. Fight for the ultimate value that your heart always wants to combat. Our hearts combat our desire to do good and try to have us abandon our values. No matter how hard we strive to hold on to the select values we possess, it is only a fraction of values required to overcome the heart. While someone may have overcome the battle to maintain patience, they may fall when it comes to lust. Overcoming this temptation could be found in adversity, but adversity can only provide opportunities directly correlated to the oppression. In the end, an individual forged by adversity may be a loyal and honest man but is still a drunkard that beats his wife. The ultimate purpose is to pursue the ultimate values. It addresses every flaw in us and demands perfection. This leads us to the answer of the second question. The highest, greatest value is the untainted character of the Christian God. In the pursuit of the untainted character of God, we discover perversions in us that we could not recognize nor overcome on our own accord. But striving for the ultimate values of God requires us to abandon all other religious or moral pursuits, since they possess fractured values compared to pure perfection. Becoming subservient to this kind of authority is not natural for us, even for the sake of our own development. The heart rejects and attacks the idea because God is its greatest enemy, and the pursuit of God is its greatest downfall. It wants us to chase after systems, philosophies, and religions that have fractured values. All of the heart's temptations are at risk once someone pursues the fullness of God's character. It becomes powerless against you and you will have better control over it. The heart becomes replaced each day until it no longer rejects the fullness of God's character, which will happen at the resurrection. Obtaining the fullness of God's character is impossible in this life. Therefore, we must continually strive to adopt his values as our own, lest we fall deeper into depravity. But the desire to pursue God cannot happen until there is value in God's full, 
untainted character. This is not a natural decision for us. If we choose to pursue goodness on our own accord, it would be meaningless compared to the expectation of God's perfection. To reconcile us to that unobtainable expectation, and create a desire for pursuing God's perfection, we need Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Jesus paid the price of being imperfect by being perfect, and then chose to endure natural consequence we deserve. When he overcame death, he built a bridge for us to be reconciled to God. Nothing imperfect can live in the full presence of perfection. God will see Jesus' perfection as our own, if we repent of our imperfections, sins, confess Jesus is Lord, and proclaim that he rose from the dead. This breaks the bondage our hearts have over us and forces it to be subservient to God. The Holy Spirit then encourages desire in us to seek God, reveals God to us, and builds unity between us and God. Once this exchange takes place, we can finally fight against our greatest oppressor. We will have fullness and meaning as we fight for the ultimate virtues of God's character, regardless of what season we are in. Our purpose in life is to become like Christ, adopting his character as our own and overcoming the oppression fortified by the heart.